Welcome to Programming Open API and ChatGPT Text Generation. I'm Dr. Chris Chapes. I'll be walking you through some code that actually uses the OpenAI API to generate and process text. And so this is the first in a series of several videos that we're going to do. We'll see natural language processing, we'll see text processing, we'll see text summation. So make sure you click the subscribe button so that you have access to those videos. Let's go ahead and jump in. So by now you should have interacted with the ChatGPT prompt. And when you first start with ChatGPT, it feels like a search engine on steroid. We're asking it questions, it's giving us response, not necessarily anything that we can do beyond a search engine. Where ChatGPT really becomes powerful is when we start to use it to generate output. And so in this case, I've said, I want you to write a poem about AI. And within seconds, ChatGPT comes back and has my poem for me. So I'm using it for text generation, content generation. And so by giving ChatGPT in the prompt some sim simple information about my company, where we're located, our new product, we have a book on OpenAI and ChatGPT programming, I've asked ChatGPT to generate a press release for me. And so within seconds, again, I've got a press release I can start to edit. I can still interact with ChatGPT and start to refine the press release, um, tell it that I want product name, product pricing, please regenerate, and it will. Good interactive solution, um, but I'm not restricted to just generating text. If I'm doing Python programming, I can give ChatGPT a description of the code I wanted to create, and it will give me an instant result. A lot of times the code is 80% there, and you can still interact with ChatGPT to do your refinement. Sometimes the code that it gives you is a buggy, and you say, I got this error message, and it will redo it. So it's a really quick way to get a proof of concept started for your code. If you're doing SQL development, you can give it your table structure and say, I need a query that joins these two tables based on this criteria, and I want some summary information. And ChatGPT will produce the SQL. So again, it's a great way for programmers to get moving quickly on a solution. So our text generation can do content, it can do poems, it can do songs, it can do press releases, it can do slide decks. And so there's no limit. It's just kind of your imagination with respect to what you want to generate. So your question may become, how do I take it to the next step? How do I program chat GPT text generation within my own solutions? And that's what this video and the next several videos will be about. And so if you're doing Python programming, you'll want to first um, install OpenAI, and so use pip. Um, the source code examples that we're going to talk about in these videos come from my new book, OpenAI and ChatGPT Programming. It's available on Amazon. The book covers 50 different applications. We'll look at um, console-based applications, and then we'll finally migrate those to the cloud and to the web. So you can make your applications available to anyone in the world. And so a lot of detail, we'll go through the nuts and bolts of how the programs work. Um, but let's go ahead and jump into a simple text generation application. And so to get started, you're going to need an API key that you can get from the open AI website. And so you just register, log in, you can get your key. The key tells open AI who's making these calls. And so you can see, I've got my code here. The first thing I do is I import open AI and then I'm giving my application, my API key. And so for simplicity, I'm just gonna have you hard code your key right into the statement that says, put your API key here. And ideally we don't want scripts laying around to have our API keys in them. In the next application, I'll show you how to put the key in the operating system environment and retrieve it so your scripts don't have your keys hard coded into them. And so you've all created a hello world program using Python, C, C++. And so my prompt I'm gonna ask ChatGPT is, what's the origin of hello world in programming? I've got it set up. I'm now going to make my API call. I call the client.chat.completions.create. I'm telling it I want to use the chat GPT-4 model, and I'm passing it my prompt. And within seconds, chat GPT will come back with its response, and I'm going to print that response, and it tells me that Hello World was generated in the 70s based on the Kerningham and Ritchie 
C programming book. And so within 10 lines of code, I've now done text generation within one of my applications. Let's start to clean things up a little bit. And so I said, you don't want to hard code your API key within your applications. And so instead, you can create an environment variable that has your key. And in this case, my third line of code is using os.getend to get my API key from the environment setting. And that's a preferred way to do it. It keeps your code secure, it keeps your key secure. And then after that, um, I'm setting up my client to make my call. Um, I've got my prompt text. I'm going to ask chat GPT, why do they call programming errors bugs? I then do my API call calling client.chat.completions.create using the chat GPT4 model. I've sent my text over and within a few seconds, I get my response and it's got a story about Grace Hopper who coined the term in 1947 when she pulled a bug out of a vacuum tube within one of the early mainframe computers. And so when you do text generation, when you do image generation um, using OpenAI and the OpenAI API, um, you're getting billed for those. And the billing occurs with respect to something called a token. And X hundred tokens become a penny. And so you want to be aware of that. And so you don't just want to throw an application out on the web and let the world use it because each time they're querying it, you're getting pinged on your API for token use and thus billing. And so I create a simple application here that's going to tell us the number of tokens that the application required when we did our API call. The start of the code, similar to what we just looked at, we import the API. I'm importing OS so I can get to my environment key. I get my key and then set up my client to make my API call. And I say, what is an open API token is my prompt I'm asking. And so you can see that um, I'm again making my API call using the GPT-4 model, specify my prompt. When I get my results back, I'm taking a look at the token total tokens um, field within the response. And so I'm displaying my output it tells me what a token is. And this particular API call used 104 tokens. You can go back at OpenAI, look at their pricing structure and determine how many pennies was that? And was it even a penny yet? But everything's gonna be built on tokens. And so when you create your applications, there may be times where you wanna limit the number of tokens it can consume. And this would be great if you had a web application so people aren't tokening you to death. Um, so if you, Scroll through the code, it's identical almost to um, the previous code, but in my API call, I've set max tokens equal to 50. And when you set max tokens, as Open API is doing its processing, it's ticking off this, this many tokens, this took commit, this many tokens. When it hits max tokens, it's going to stop. It may stop mid sentence. And so if we look at our output here, it starts telling me what a open AI token is. And then it stops because it got to my 50 max tokens. And so you can still see that the prompt tokens took 14. So although I said 50, I had to tokenize my prompt. And so my total tokens used was 64. Not a bad habit, especially when you're first getting started to include the max underscore tokens um, value parameter. So you can do something that ends up using more tokens than you wish you'd spent. Um, but again, tokens are relatively inexpensive, um, but just so you know. And so when we interact with ChatGPT at the prompt, ChatGPT keeps a context or a history of our discussions. And so in this case, I've asked the question, um, when is the Kentucky Derby? It comes back and tells me that it's normally the first Saturday in May each year. And then I asked just a Question, who won the race in 1973? Whether auto races or track races, there was um, different types of races, but ChatGPT knows my context. I was talking about the Kentucky Derby. It comes back and tells me that Secretariat won the Kentucky Derby. And so as we're interacting with the ChatGPT prompt, it's maintaining a context of our discussion. We can leverage this when we use the ChatGPT um, API and we can pass information to the API that sets the context for the prompt that we want to do. And to do that, we specify messages in our API call. And so I've got a Python prompt or program here 
And the first part of it's the same. We're setting up our open AI. We're getting our key. We're setting up a client, defining what's the prompt. My prompt is, what is the biggest city? Biggest city where? Um, and so that's where our context is going to come in. And so you can see that in my API call, I'm using the chat GPT for model, but I've set up some messages and I've got a system role and I'm saying Arizona became a state in 2012. We're, oh, we're talking about Arizona. What state was the capital then? We're still talking about Arizona. And so now um, I finally send over my prompt and it's got some context. So when I run my program, um, it's going to tell me that the biggest city in Arizona is Phoenix. My question was, what's the biggest city? The ChatGPT API used my messages for context, so it knew we were talking about Arizona, and therefore knew that the biggest city should be Phoenix. Now, we're going to drill deep on a lot of applications that really start to leverage this message context capability, and it gives us great functionality when we want to do text generation, text summation, text analysis. And so what's going to come next in our next video is we're going to create an application that displays a couple of prompts. Um, in the middle of the screen, you can see that I've got a question prompt. And can you create a press release for a product? But up at the top, I'm saying a context. And so I, I give it the information I want for the press release. Then I click submit and I get my more detailed press release. So to do this, I'm actually sending over the context in a system message. And now I've got my user message, which can you create a press release? So we'll see that in our next video. So make sure that you've subscribed so that you'll see um, the video as it comes live. And I'm Dr. Chris Jamesa. And I hope that you're having success with ChatGPT and OpenAPI.